Hello, and thank you for joining me for this talk. My name is Danielle Halsey, and I am a postdoctoral research fellow at Stanford University. I'd like to start by acknowledging my co-authors for this talk. PhD student Hannah Blondin has been working very closely with me on this project. Joe Crawford is a fishing captain down in Costa Rica who actually developed the app I'll be talking about today. And the principal investigator on our project is Dr. Larry Crowder. For this talk, I'm going to share with you a new mobile platform for sport fishing citizen science called Capped App. You may be thinking that the market for sport fishing citizen science reporting apps is a little bit flooded at the moment, but I think there are some really unique and interesting features that are part of this app that address some of the major concerns that we have when we're considering using these types of platforms to collect citizen science data. I want to start off by talking about some of the problems that we have in marine fisheries management. For many different species in the ocean, we really lack comprehensive observation databases. Either species are missed and fisheries dependent or government supported research programs, or maybe these programs don't exist at all in the region in which the fish is found. This can be especially true for highly migratory species that transcend local geopolitical boundaries or maybe spend most of their time out in areas of beyond national jurisdiction. There's also a lot of uncertainty, oftentimes surrounding a sport fish's distribution and population size. This is likely related to my first point, but because of this, it can often lead to ineffective management strategies when we have incomplete information about a species. This in turn can lead to distrust in researchers and managers from the recreational and commu commercial fishing communities. The issue of lack of species observation has really come to the forefront in one of the projects our team is working on right now called Project Dynamar, which stands for Dynamic Marine Animal Research. This is a dynamic ocean management project currently focused on the fisheries off of Costa Rica. We're working with fisheries managers in Costa Rica to create environmentally driven uh, dynamic distribution models to try and redirect fisheries management efforts. The approach that we're taking is similar to the dynamic ocean management approach to reduce bycatch and support sustainable fisheries project that was led by Dr. Elliot Hazen, which focused on the fisheries conflicts in the California current ecosystem. Our study is focusing on blue marlin and sailfish off of the coast of Costa Rica. And while we are using satellite tags to try to get a better understanding of the spatial distributions of these two species, we also realize that we may be able to benefit from the popularity of recreational catch and release fisheries in this region and use catch and release records as additional observations in our modeling efforts. For more information about the specifics of Project Dynamar, I encourage you to look up the talk by PhD student Hannah Blondin called Billfish Satellite Tracking in the Eastern Tropical Pacific Allows for Inference to Seasonal Distributions. So mobile reporting platforms for recreational fishing and citizen science in general are nothing new. The table on the left hand side is a paper from Venturelli et al and has summarized some of the most popular fishing, uh, mobile fishing apps that were available at the time of their paper. In their paper, the authors laid out some of the opportunities that these mobile platforms provide, including the fact that the apps allow us to get a lot of data at low cost because we're relying on participation of citizen scientists. Their logging can come in at near real time. So, you know, fishers go out and at the end of the day, they will report their catches. You can get data from extensive locations. Scientists can't be everywhere all the time, but you can leverage the fact that fishers are often everywhere a lot of the time. A lot of the data that they're collecting and reporting can already be integrated into existing management frameworks. However, the paper also notes that there are a couple of challenges when trying to use these data sets. There are many options available, which makes it tricky to synthesize and integrate data from all of these different platforms. There are no data collection standards or guidelines for managers for these apps to follow. And perhaps some of the biggest issues are the inability to validate data collected by citizen scientists, especially in something like a catch and release fishery, and then recruitment and retention. As with any platform, you know, you may get a surge in users when it's the latest and greatest new thing, but over time, there's little incentive for fisher people to continue using the app. So let's talk about CaptApp, which is designed as a digital logging solution created by captains to handle logging in the most intense fishing destinations. This application was originally released in 2016, so it's relatively new, but still ripe for further development. This application is available as a mobile app and on both Android and iOS and as a web portal. 
So the mobile app is what fishers will use when they're out in the field and they can look at their data that way. But then there's also a web portal where fishers can view and edit their data and um, view reports from other fishers. In both cases, there's a very social media like news feed to view uh, your own and others reports and to see what's going on all over the globe. Some of the unique features of this app are that users can participate under multiple different roles. So you can participate as a captain, as a mate, or as an angler. Catch, release, and harvest logs for the most common sport fishes are easily logged. I'll show you an example of how this works in a couple of slides, but with each of these logs, it's possible to record the location using the phone's GPS, even when you're out of cell service. And I think one of the most important things that we'll talk about a lot is the integrated camera feature, which allows users to include photos and videos of their fish for validation. To address the recruitment and retention concern, this app is heavily based on the use of virtual tournaments, which can be used at a fishing club level, a local level, regional level, even a global level. This really incentivizes user engagement with promises of fame and fortune. Okay, maybe not fame and fortune, but the social media like feature allows users to compete for points and there are real dollar prizes awarded in tournaments. The opportunity to win money incentivizes participation. You can also incentivize participation in scientific tagging programs if tagging of the fish is a requirement of the tournament, which is something that the app developer is very interested in promoting for virtual future virtual tournaments. So here's just an example of what the app interface looks like. This is for a user who has already logged a number of different activity logs into their system. This is showing all of their activity logs between 2017 and 2020. So you can see as you zoom in on your records, you can check to see what species you caught, where and when. You can scroll through your past logs and keep track of your hookup percentages, the number of rises, your releases, your harvests of different species, if you're allowed to harvest the species in your region. And it really allows the fishers to keep track of their catches over time. At the end of the day, the users can submit all of the information about how their fishing trip went. And at that point, they can input a starting time and an ending time for when they were fishing, which allows researchers and managers to have a better idea about fishing effort. Within the app, there are nearly 100 commonly captured sport fish indexed for easy identification and logging. As you can see here in the example on the left, I've pressed that a fish has raised to the bait, so I can scroll through and browse a list of available species. For many of these species, there are scientific illustrations to show what the species looks like to help with identification. And species are also categorized into different categories for easier searching. On the right hand side in the bar graph, you can see the number of activity logs that were logged in the app just in 2019 alone. There's already a lot of data being collected, but potential to increase the number of logs for many more species. So we're gonna get into an example now of how these virtual tournaments work and also how the app works to increase user engagement. On the left, you can see a screenshot from the virtual tournament announcement that occurred in August of 2019. The tournament occurred over two days with a guaranteed payout of $1,000. The app is set up so that once you enter a tournament, it will send you alerts before the tournament starts. Here in the middle, we have a screenshot showing the example of a message that a fisher who signed up for the tournament would get saying that the tournament is going to start in two hours. And then, you know, most of the time when fishermen are out fishing, they're in places where um, they're out of cell phone range, but the app will still send you alerts. For example, on the right hand side, we have lines in in 10 minutes alert. Uh, the app will push that to the user even when they're out of cell phone range. So just to show you what the data collecting potential actually looks like for this app, I have some data from an example tournament that occurred in August of 2020, so just a few weeks ago. Uh, the data that is collected is the basic spatiotemporal records that I believe can be integrated into existing management models. So currently they're collecting information on the species, GPS locations from the cell phone, the date, the fishing effort, which we talked about a few slides ago, and um, other identifiers such as the boat, angler, and tournament information. Here's what the data looks like from the tournament that occurred in August, showing the locations and the kernel density estimation for all species that were tagged during 
that were logged, sorry, not tagged, during this tournament by the over 20 boats that fished during this tournament. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the project that I'm working on in addition to this is focusing on tagging and tracking blue marlin and sailfish off the coast of Costa Rica and in the eastern tropical Pacific in general. Our tagging efforts have really slowed down during the global pandemic and so getting these extra observations of sailfish from this tournament could prove to be very useful as we continue to develop species distribution models. So I think there's really a potential for data like this that's collected by citizen scientists to be really useful for researchers and managers. And these kinds of things might become more and more relevant as we're dealing with the global interruptions in everyday research efforts. So I mentioned before that I believe that the integrated camera in the app is maybe one of the most unique and critical features that sets this app apart. On the right hand side, uh, it's going to show you what this looks like. So there's um, videos from the tournament in a gallery that were posted by all of the different anglers to validate their logs. Here is a video of a harvest of a mahi-mahi. And one of the really cool things is that although the app doesn't have a place right now for the users to record the size information for their catches, these users have actually taken a video showing very clearly the length measurement of this mahi-mahi. So it just shows a great example of how not only can the species identification be validated using this integrated camera, but you can also get other metadata about the fish from the video as well. And as I mentioned, um, using the integrated camera allows these virtual tournament settings for there to actually be a judge to determine whether or not they approve or refuse the record that is logged by the user. So in this example data set here highlighted in red, I'm showing you the column where a judge has decided whether or not the different records were going to be approved, refused, or claimed as invalid, depending on the quality of the video or picture that was uploaded by the user associated with that log. So for example, if we look again at the distribution of sailfish catches that were logged during this tournament, this is the map of all of those activity logs. However, if I further filter the day for only the approved activity logs, you can see that a few of those records were taken out. Not all of them had either the appropriate observations or they didn't use the camera feature at all. So those records were kicked out. This is just to show you the data collecting potential. Um, here's a bar graph showing the number of activity logs for each of the species that were logged uh, to have been raised, hooked, released, and, and or harvested during this two day tournament in August. You can see that there were hundreds of species observations recorded during this two day tournament. Most of them were sailfish and yellowfin tuna. Sailfish and blue marlin are what I'm particularly interested in, but I think it's a great example of the citizen science data collecting potential that can happen during just a few days in a local region. So let's now imagine if that was expanded to users all over the world. Something that I think is really exciting is that the captains who have developed this app is also uh, really acknowledges the value of conventional, conventional tagging programs and has worked to develop a feature for the app, which has not been released yet. But the idea is that the integrated camera has the ability to smartly capture the information that a fisher records on the data sheet associated with a conventional tag. The idea is that this would hopefully work with any tagging program card, whether it be Greyfish Research or conventional tags from NOAA Fisheries or any other project like that. They're hoping the smart camera will be able to kind of um, facilitate this data getting to the tagging programs in a much easier um, and more efficient way. And finally, I just wanted to reiterate the fact that I think there's really potential for this app and other apps like it to become more commonly used data source for research and management. This is an example of all the catches again in the open circles overlaid on sea surface temperature data for the two days of the tournament. We're working on creating species distribution models that are environmentally driven. And you can imagine that the data um, that Using this data, we can match these locations of species observations to the environmental conditions viewed by satellites and really integrate those observations and the environmental data into species distribution modeling. Or other researchers may be interested in how sightings or catch per unit effort change over time and in different environmental conditions, which can give us additional insights into the population structure and distributions of these different species. 
so where do we go from here? A lot of this feedback comes from what I've heard the, um, from the captain who's developed the app. It would be really great for him to get buy-in from researchers and other management agencies to not only help fund some of the app expansions, but also some of his data management goals. Um, we really need to work as a community to develop some citizen science data collection standards, or if this already exists and I'm not aware of it, and somebody please feel free to send me this kind of information and I'll pass it along to the app developer. He would love to see it. As with most citizen science data projects, we really need some data sharing standards uh, for fishers to increase engagement and trust. So, you know, defining who has access to the data and for what purpose. And this is just kind of a, a general comment that I get from many of the fishers in both the recreational and commercial fishing side is that we really need to have better communication between citizen science and researchers and managers. In many cases, fishers are sharing a lot about their experiences and their knowledge of a system and um, kind of the results of the projects that they participate in doesn't always get communicated back to them. And this can end up being really frustrating and increase um, distrust in science and management among fishing communities. So with that, please, please, please feel free to reach out and contact me if you have any additional questions through either my email or through the angling for AM. Uh, answers feature. Here I have some of our project Dynamark contact information listed. If you're interested in the app, you can scan this QR code and it will direct you to a link. You can download um, the app or check out the website. Thank you so much for listening to my talk and I look forward to hearing some feedback.